You know, George, I've been doing this for many years, coming on camera. You know, we've never done this together, right? No, this is the first time. I'm excited. So I was thinking, you know, I'd bring an icebreaker. All right. I think we, we got our icebreaker rolling up right now. George, my what friend. What am I looking at? Welcome to Plate HQ, everybody. Today, we're here with Ryan from CRKT. Good George, to have you. George, arguably, you arguably the best hair in the industry. I'm doing great, Ryan. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing very well. Very well. Awesome. So there's a lot of new stuff on the table here. And there's some grams over here, John Graham designs, that we'll talk about later. I'm very excited about them. I am too. But in the meantime, I mean, what, what do we got? Yeah, so, um, you know, George, I've been doing this for many years, coming on camera. You know, we've never done this together, right? No, this is the first time. I'm excited. So I was thinking, you know, I'd bring an icebreaker. All right, an icebreaker. You know, so um, I think, uh, I think we, we got our icebreaker rolling up right now. George, my What friend. am I looking at? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's coming together. <laughs> um, All right, come on, boys. Things a little heavy. You guys all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, George, this is the icebreaker. Okay. So, is this the chunk of ice? Well, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I've seen everything. Yeah. <laughs> what you a like handsome that? devil that is. Look at this. You were, <laughs> you had your eyes on this knife. I, I know. <laughs> So every year I bring gifts. Yeah. And so George, this is your gift, but you're gonna have to work for it this year. <laughs> this, is just, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. You like that? I so, really do. Um, you know, I, I felt like I did a decent job here. Yeah, did you make this, Ryan? Yeah, well, um, I ordered it. <laughs> okay. So kind of, and it is slowly melting. Yeah, so um, this thing's pretty heavy. I don't know how we're gonna get this off the table. Can I lick it? <laughs> I mean, go for it. Mmm, I taste good. Is your, is your tongue gonna get stuck like... Uh... Well, I certainly hope not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at this, you got the sunburst in the back. You like that? Oh my goodness, this is the most fabulous thing I've ever seen. Wow. So yeah, what do you think, my friend? I, is this I, a pretty good icebreaker? This is this is the best icebreaker. Do I have to break it now? We're gonna, <laughs> I, I think we're gonna plan on doing that after the after the shoot, man. Look at that thing, though. That looks pretty dang good. And I mean, there's a can, knife Can inside. you please go stand by it? Yeah. Maybe stand by it with, with, the, with the knife, too. With the knife? <laughs> I've never been happier. <laughs> That's a thumbnail right so there. So <laughs> now, that, now that we know each other. <laughs> now that we know each other. So Ryan, what's the first knife on the table? First knife on the table. So we came out with our original Provoke many years ago. This mm -hmm. has been a top seller for us. Um, still selling like crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the original for everybody maybe that haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the original? Provoke, yeah. George? So, but it's the cool kinematic action. So there you go. Yeah. You got the two arms that swing, and that way, when you have it, it's just a little push of your thumb, and you have a karambit now. Correct. So that is definitely going to have a tactical application, right? Mm -hmm. So the designer Joe Caswell wanted to come out with an EDC-friendly version. So this is going to be the new Provoke EDC. So same kinematic mechanism with mm -hmm. the arms. Also, we switched up the lock here, so the lock is going to be much more intuitive. Okay. So you simply just push down there on the lock, the knife folds back up in on itself, you you know still have the same motion of opening it, mm -hmm. but you can carry it and hold it more like a, a traditional knife. You have your drop point blade, satin finish, just makes sense. Adding to the line, somebody that maybe doesn't want to have like a tactical cram, but, but loves that kinematic mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. Can have it in the Provoke EDC. Here's the thing I noticed first. So if you look at the original Provoke next to this one, this one's a lot thinner. 100%. So, I mean, pocket friendly for sure. carry. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not much of a karambit guy. I I end up cutting myself a lot with them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this one, sign me up. I'm saying, yeah. Right there. Because you can still get the cool, like, tactical feel to open it, but then you can just use it like a regular old knife. There you, you go. Open your box, slice your apple, dig out your sliver, whatever. It's still this truly iconic action. I think it is in, it is iconic now. That action is iconic. And also have your uh, zero profile pocket clip on the back. So it just slides cool nicely, thing. nicely in the pocket. So yeah, really excited about this model. Really satisfying to open, have that nice snap to it. Mm -hmm. And then like you were saying, you can you know slice your apple and, and be on your way. Still keeping in the Provoke family, we came out the trainer. Okay. Right, so you can officially be safe now when you're when you're swinging that thing around. So yeah. Look, no cuts. 
Yeah, <laughs> great for practicing, you know, hooking, you know, anything like that, martial arts, whatever you had used, you know, the original tactical cram before, you can use that um, and you have your blunt tip. So for safety purposes, George. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and another thing I would say is when I have knives like this, if I had a knife like this, I imagine the thing I'd want to show off is the mechanism. This people just aren't going to hurt themselves on. Like, yeah, I'll just, yeah, this is cool. This is super rad. And then you can imagine it with a sharp edge, but you don't have to experience the sharp edge <laughs> firsthand. There you go. There you go. So, yeah, really excited about our new Provokes. Got our trainer and then our Provoke DC. So, uh, yeah, moving along to our CEO family. We got two new CEOs, George. We have, these are our CEO micro flippers. So okay. you have the sheep's foot model there. So entirely blue on the handle. You got your mm -hmm. cool milling on there. Um, and then you got your sheep's foot blade. I have the more traditional drop point with the white handle. Also got your cool accents here with the blue, um, you know, blue on the pocket clip, the liners. Also, I love this pocket clip because it is reversible. And so on the butt end of the knife there, that is where the, the clip is, or uh, where the screw is gonna be rather. Mm -hmm. And you can just flip it around. There's no, you know, like hole or anything. When you flip the pocket clip around, you know, sometimes there's like mm -hmm. a hole there yep. that you can see, so. It's really very cool. clean. Yeah, very clean. So also I wanted to show, this is the CEO Compact that we came out with uh, in 22. So you can see for size comparison. This one's a little bit smaller. Yeah, a little, a little smaller, uh, boxier though. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can see there with the with the handle. Uh, mm -hmm. You got your happy family there, and oh, adding so happy. adding to the uh, the CEO family. So Richard Rogers Design, um, he's also a genius. You know, we we work with so many great knife designers and get to hear their backstory and why they design products. And it's really cool to to hear hear why he designed this. He wanted you know just a non threatening knife that you can carry every day and. Mm -hmm. Fits nicely in your pocket. Um, okay, so moving along to one of my favorite knife designers on our roster, Mr. Lucas Brindley. So <laughs> this is going to be our Tuna Compact. So for comparison, George, if you could hold that, mm -hmm. please. Thank you. This is our original Tuna uh, that we came out with a couple years ago, and you can see the size comparison here. This has been a top seller for us, and that post-tactical kind of look. You got your brass accents, you got your OD green. This is gonna have the black scales with still the same bronze, on the backspace or in the, the pivot. Just gonna be a little bit smaller, a little bit more friendly to carry. I love the size of that thing. Also the geometry with the thumb stud, it flies out. Um, just a, a great everyday carry knife. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh yes. I like that a lot. So my my, my previous favorite Burnley design was the squid. Okay. I love the squid. We got because... that on the table as well. Oh yeah, it's right there, isn't it? I'm gonna pull it out for, for juxtaposition purposes. Okay. So these are both Burnley designs, and I like this one because even though it's fairly small, the handle is round enough to get your fingers around. But I think I think I like the true length of this one a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I think I think the next Burnley design I get it's gonna be this guy right here. Okay, it's sporty. Hey Milo, you got something sporty? You know, like a tuna? <laughs> it's sporty. <laughs> it's sporty. Yeah, I love this thing. I was carrying this knife around for probably three weeks after. You know, I saw the release of everything. I was drawn to this model. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a huge Lucas Burnley fan, great buddies with him, but just the size, the the ease of use, I mm -hmm. I kind of like a smaller knife, um, and I think that this really works for me, so I'm glad it works for you as well. Okay, moving along to another great designer. Gosh, we got so many great designers, George. Yeah, this one's TJ Schwartz, right? <laughs> Man, took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> So this is going to be, let, let's do the size comparison again. So this okay. is going to be our Overland Compact. So many of you maybe have the original Overland. Uh, so this is going to be the OG version and this is going to be the compact version. So you can see it's a little chunkier, um, kind of shrunk down, compact. But that's still a four finger knife. Oh though. yeah. This year he came out with a fixed blade in MagnaCut. That was sort of the fixed blade version of the Overland. And I'm like, that is so rad. But I think that design lends itself to a folder. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, CRKT has that. And then the, the compact version too? Man, it's, it's just a Schwartz holiday this year. <laughs> I'm loving it. He, yeah. I think he's an up and coming designer. I hope to see a lot more of him. So I, I said that in a previous meeting. I go, yeah, TJ's up and coming. I go, you know what? He's not even up and coming, he's arrived. He's here. Like, he seriously <laughs> is here. He's honestly, he's, mm -hmm. he's you know, boxed people out. He's let people know where he is in the market. 
in the industry because he's come he's coming out with the great designs. And my goodness, does he have a handle on ergonomics? Hey, I, mean, I didn't mean the pun. No pun intended. <laughs> but he, he makes a very well ergonomic, comfortable knife. Yes, he does. Yeah. So that is our new Overland Compact. Pull up that other one, George. The, the next one on the list. So I'll pull up the little one. Yes. This is the. I mean, I assume it's a squid. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. So this is going to be our squid compact. So we've had three compacts in a row. We've taken <laughs> our best sellers and we've kind of shrunk them down. Um, but also not taken away from you know the ergonomics of you know handling the knife for everyday use. Even though it is small, it fits really well. Kind of like the the Overland in the hand. Um, this is going to have the assisted opening mechanism because it's so small. You don't have enough weight on and the, the tip blade to carry it out. Exactly. So that mm -hmm. does have the assisted opening mechanism. Give that a whirl. Give that a, a nice open. All right. Or a, or a hold. Or a hold. So oh, puts, that's nice. puts a smile on your face, man. <laughs> it does. It, it, it's one of those knives. So similar to the Ritual, completely different knife that we came out with a couple years ago. I opened that for the first time. I couldn't stop smiling. Mm -hmm. This did the same thing, but it's a completely different model. I saw it and I was like, oh, this is cute. And I opened it and I was like, oh, yes, this is great. This is awesome. <laughs> so sometimes on these really tiny flipper knives, you, ha you like the way you hold it, it is such that the tip will hit your palm on the way out. Mm -hmm. You'll nick your palm. But this one, I don't know how he did it. I'm going to try as hard as I can. Nope, it goes right past the palm. You will not cut your palm on this <laughs> tiny flipper. And I'm, like, I'm thinking like for that pencil grip, <laughs> That is perfect right there. Uh, like yeah, The pencil grip, yeah. Yeah. The squid, and then also we're gonna move along to the Pilar. These are great entry-level EDC knives. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had so many friends, what should I buy for my first knife or give my girlfriend or my wife a knife? And I've always said, get the squid or the Pilar and then you can kind of expand from there. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we've taken the original squid and then we've expanded to like the Squid XM. Now we got the Squid Compact. And now with the Pilar, this is our Pilar 4. This is our fourth addition to the Pilar. Ooh. So this is gonna have pretty much all the same specs as the Pilar 3, except you got your clip point blade. So yeah, I'm really I, liking that. I know you were crushing on that earlier. I was. So I'll tell you why I was crushing on it. So th here's the other Pilar 3. Oh yes, also that is a collaboration that we've done. This is an exclusive. That naked G10 looks real nice. Uh, mm -hmm. D2 blade steel, blacked out on the backside. Ah, it's a good looking knife. Oh, you've been practicing. I have. I really like this knife. It's a really solid one. But this one has a, a, a solid deep belly for that slicing work. And then it's got the thicker tip, and I tend to be pretty mean to my tips. But this one, if you're a little bit nicer to your tips, which I probably should be, okay. this clip point kind of gives you that thinner tip. Yeah, maybe just a little bit thinner. Yeah, I mean, you got your, your good looking swedge right there. And For piercing tasks, like cutting tape or slicing an apple or something, or stabbing an apple, because if you haven't done that, go stab an apple. It's a good time. <laughs> the Pilar 4, I'm, I'm vibing with that yeah. clip point. It, yeah. And it just looks so good. I yeah, like it a I, lot. I love it too. I mean, I have no words. Yeah, the, the Pilar is <laughs> great. You got your, you know, brass backspace around the back. You got everything that you would love about the Pilar 3 mm -hmm. in the Pilar 4, but with a clip point blade. Yep. And people have been asking for that on the Pilar. They're like, I love the handle. I love the ergos. I love the design. I just could use a different blade shape. And I'm like, you made it. I love it. Believe it or not, we do listen, George. <laughs> you got ears. I see them. They're there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next we're moving along uh, to Ken Onion. You cannot talk CRKT without talking Ken Onion, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, this is a, a new Ken Onion for this year. This is the Jake. The Jake? Yeah, so he designed this knife for a gentleman named uh, Jake Bush. And so he's a police officer down in Southern Georgia, knife, knife enthusiast, huge collector, great mm -hmm. friends with Ken Onion. And so he was telling him all the specs that he wanted, kind of the knife, you know, it's like they were, had multiple phone conversations and Ken could not come up with a name. He just was like, the Jake, the Jake, the Jake. So then he just ended up naming the knife the Jake. Well, that's awesome. So, Jake Bush, you're a lucky man. Not many people have a knife named after I know, how, how cool is that story? Um, but what also is really cool about this model is we were talking to him about a month ago uh, via Zoom and he said this is his number one requested custom right now. Really? He has a huge backlog of any knife he's ever made. This model right here is, is, is his number one uh, custom. And so what I love about this production model is it literally looks like his custom. I know that there was a semi-custom Pilar that came with a titanium handle and Jesper Voxness still has it, but that one became the Pilar. 
And I just think that's super awesome that you like take the schematics, you talk to the designers, you make a very faithful interpretation. And, and that's what we do best, you know, it's the, the custom to production model. We work with, you know, all these great knife designers. Uh, I believe it's 46 and counting right now. And we want to be yeah. true to their design. You know, these are their babies. This is what they do for a living. And we have a great team that, that works closely with the designer to come out with great products like this. Yeah. And Jake, if you're listening, let me tell you <laughs> what I love about this knife. So first of all, that handle is right where it needs to be. Like it's just enough. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's just a solid working handle. And then this blade with that deep belly, but also a little section of straight here. You can do whatever carving you need to do, but then it slices really well. I'm imagining in police work, you might do a bit of slicing like seat belts or zip ties, I don't know. Whatever else you cut as a police officer, which I'm guessing is a long and complicated list with a lot of fun stories. I'd love to hear it sometime. I gotta meet this Jake guy. He sounds like a really great guy. The, this is designed by Kenny Onion. Kenny Onion. Ken Onion's son. Okay, I was like, I didn't know that we were on nickname basis with Ken, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is Ken son's first production model. So that's pretty cool. He's fallen in his uh, dad's footsteps and. Thank you know, goodness for it. That Onion name. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I, I know Ken had some influence, but for the most part, you know, this was this was you know his baby. And how old is Kenny? Uh, he's in his mid twenties. I man, I'm in my mid twenties, and I don't have a production knife. Okay. This guy's precocious. <laughs> <laughs> Rock on! Like I really like this. It's it's gentlemanly. Very gentlemanly. Kind of old school <laughs> look to it. Yeah, you got your nice aluminum bolster, polished G10, assisted opening mechanism. Milled out finger flipper. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. just a lot to like in this model. It's really cool. This is his first production model, and it's like, really? I mean, I don't even want to know what mine would look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm really interested in that flipper tab. So most of the time you see a flipper tab, and it might look something like this guy right here, where it's kind of a, a fin that comes up, and it hooks your finger kind of nice. Uh-huh. But this one is a little bit more geometric. Yeah. It's kind of square and it's got the little mill out. It, it's it's a little touch because it's a very clean and simple knife, very gentlemanly. But then there's that little thing there that's just a little bit different, and I really appreciate that. Yeah. Well done, Kenny. I like this <laughs> knife. Man, you guys like. I feel like every time I talk CRKT, all I do is name drop, because you guys have a lot of cool friends in the industry. <laughs> we do have some cool friends. It makes our job easy. Yeah, speaking of cool friends, I've been I've been eyeing these for a little while. Yes, you have. I believe you you got a present over there as well. <laughs> what, I'm gonna have to earn there? it though. You're gonna have to earn it. <laughs> Pull that thing out. So the first thing I noticed about this is holy handle. <laughs> <laughs> holy handle. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is quite the handle. So this is our Razel Nax. So it's a knife and an axe. Is that like K N A X E? No, just N A X. Oh, N A X. All yeah. right. Yeah. Nax. Yeah. Nax. So. I mean, how cool is that thing? You lay it out on a on a table with a bunch of knives, you're probably pulling that thing first. I mean, I like fixed blades and I like hatchets. They're a lot of fun, but I never thought that I could combine the two in such a way because it's light like a knife, but I imagine if I'm all the way back here, I can get some decent chopping performance Absolutely. with it. Absolutely, yeah. You can hack away, you can choke up. 1075 carbon steel. So it's tough, it'll take it. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. just has this cool worn look to it. Yeah, um, that micarta. Uh, of all the knives, you know, I, I was kind of flustered getting organized, and I was just like, I gotta show George these two models because I know he's gonna <laughs> like them. I really am. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I, I, I think I picked the picture too, and I even put one in the ice sculpture for you. I, I, I took a gamble, and I was like, I think this is gonna be one of George's favorite models. I, I think you're right. Yeah, I'm so, gonna look at that one next. So let's, let's pick that up. <laughs> okay. So, so that is just our Razel fixed blade. Okay. So. You got your, you know, razor, you got your scraping edge here, razor, piercing point there on the end. You got your nice jimping up top. You got your red pins in here, which looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Full tang. I know you like fixed blades. Mm -hmm. I really don't carry fixed blades often. I, I don't know why, I, I just, I like folders, mm -hmm. but this changed the game for me because you can carry it like just an everyday knife. Just. Right there, right there in, in the your pocket. pocket. Yep. And then you just grab that, yeah, or maybe just, throw a lanyard on there or something. Yeah, you just pop it out, deploy, and you're good to go. So I love the sheath capability with this. Super cool for you at home. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. What I love about these is the like normally I'm not much of a cleaver guy, 
but he always makes sure that the front has an edge too. Absolutely. And yeah. that is just more utility. So don't think, what would you ever use that for? You think, what wouldn't you use that for? Yeah, it's a razor, razor and a chisel. Oh, razor. razor. Okay, it all makes sense now. <laughs> no one's name is Razor, just the knife. <laughs> a lot of the time when we see a folder, especially one that has kind of a, a nice design to it, we want to be nice to it. We want to make sure this is a knife that does a job and I want to give it only that job and I don't want to abuse it in any form. But I pick up this, it's, it's affordable. And if I'm like painting the house, or I'm refinishing my parents' gazebo, or I'm doing some like hard, dirty task, sign me up for this thing right here because it's got the little nub in here. If you need like get open a paint can or something, you can scrape up whatever, you can cut stuff. I'm not afraid to use this. Uh, that is the gazebo knife of choice. The gazebo <laughs> knife of choice. Okay, so pick up pick up this guy right here. This is our new Shogun Matic. Shogun Matic. Yeah, so typically Matics are, are rather larger. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, RM, this is RMJ Tactical Design. So okay. Ryan Johnson wanted to come out with more of a smaller Matic. So you got your, you know, you can dig up really any hard ground with this, you know, piercing point here. And with your spike, you can just go, go to town on, <laughs> I don't want to say a gazebo, but you can go to town <laughs> on, uh, on some any, hard dirt. There's yes. a fossil in there. There you go. <laughs> and then you can scrape it out with that. With the that. ads head. Yeah, there you go. And then also what's mm -hmm. cool is the Shogun handle, uh, mm -hmm. it's Tennessee Hickory, it swaps out with our other Shogun. Yeah, so that is our Shogun Matic by RMJ Tactical. And just a great useful tool for overlanding, camping, you know, digging a trench around your, your campsite. It, it rains so much in Portland mm -hmm. that <laughs> you... You better should, dig the water out. You, yeah, you better before you start camping or, or else you're gonna be sorry. Also, uh, it kind of looks like Yukon uh, Cornelius as well. I don't know yeah. if you know that. It, it might be a little young, but... Um, Did that movie come out in like 1955? <laughs> I think you're a little young too, buddy. That's true, that's true. <laughs> okay, so last but not least on the table, this is an Elmer Rausch design. This is the Odor Axe. He is the god of divine madness. The god of divine madness. Yes, a, a, a Scandinavian mythological uh, god. And so this thing is freaking cool. Can, yeah. can I just get my hands on this? Uh, what, what I love about this model is this oblong handle. So it registers really well in the hand. Um, you can kind of see that teardrop shape. It's not entirely round like the Shogun. So mm -hmm. you really just want to hack away. Um, yeah, this is a, essentially a Scandinavian battle axe. Okay. Yeah. So I'm ready to go to war with the Celts. This will be fun. <laughs> And I, I also, I mean, if I just want to go to war with some woods or something, I'm thinking there you, go. you can choke way up, but then this hook is like this, I mean, the spike is kind of hooked. And I'm thinking like for like dragon wood or whatever for into the fire. But I thought, what if I'm, if that's in my hand, it's going to hit my wrist, but I am going to lever this as hard as I can. I cannot get it to hit my wrist. So don't be afraid of the hook. Just appreciate it for looking cool. Just hey, throw this out. We, we still got time. Okay, we, we might go throw time. this at something like, <laughs> yeah, that handle, that's that's a nice handle. And I love the like kind of the burned finish to it. Yeah, it has a great finish. 10, uh, 1055 carbon steel, Tennessee Hickory. This is a part of our Forge by War program. You know, at El Mirage, thank you for your service. Just awesome model. Man. So that's a wrap, George. What do you think? I'm excited. This is a great year for CRKT. Okay. We've got all the famous minis, We've got the micro even. We got the new EDC from Caswell, Joe Caswell. Yes. Yep. And then, of course, the Razels. Yes, the Razels. Mm. I'm I'm just so so excited for what the new year holds. Like this is this is very very wonderful. Okay. Ryan, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. And, I mean, lest I forget. <sighs> what a beautiful oh, that thing. Is, that's that is glorious, my friend. <laughs> it really is. Anyway, thank you for joining us on Knife Banner. Ryan, always good to see you. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Ready? Yeah. Woo! I think I've hit the nothing. <laughs> I, I might have broken it. <laughs> this actually works really well for that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>